Good morning. Uh, this video won't be anything too fancy, but I just wanted to give you a quick recording to explain a few things for today's homework. Um, so, real quick, let's start with fronts. A front is the edge of an air mass, it's the leading edge of an air mass, and they come in four different varieties. The first one is a cold front. You can tell it's a cold front because it's blue and because it has triangles on it. Those triangles will show you not only that it's a cold front, but it's headed that direction. Okay, whatever side the symbols are on, that's the way it's moving. So, what that tells me is the air behind it is cold, and that's the front of the cold air. That means the air up here must be warm. That's a cold front. Second one is a warm front. A warm front is going to be drawn with red, because it's warm, and you'll see these are half circles instead of triangles. Same principle applies though. The symbol is on the top of the line. That means the front is moving that way. And again, it's the front of warm air, which means the cold air must be up here. There's the two easy ones. The two that are slightly more complicated. <clears throat> this one, I'll write the name for this one. It's called an occluded front, which I know is weird and we won't talk much about it for a while, but an occluded front has not only warm symbols facing one direction, it also has cold symbols facing the exact same direction. So what that means is you have warm and cold air moving north in this picture. The last one is called a stationary front. A stationary front has cold symbols, triangles, facing one way, while it has warm symbols facing the other. What that means, whoops, that's a terrible half circle. There we go. What that means is you've got warm air going one way, you've got cold air going another way, and they run into each other and they get stuck, which is why it's called a stationary front, because it stays right there, because they're stuck. Stationary, get it? So, there's your four types of fronts. Cold, warm, occluded, and stationary. Now, the other information you need for today is how to draw a surface station model. You start with a circle, and then you do the cloud cover, and you have a handout that kind of goes through these different symbols, but I'm gonna run through them real quick. Um, I'm gonna look outside today, and it is totally overcast, so I'm gonna shade in the whole entire thing. Uh, the wind today is, and it's hard to tell, looks like it is from the northeast. So, knowing your directions, north, east, south, and west, northeast is this way. So, on my surface station model, I draw a line towards northeast saying that's the way the wind is from. Now, if you use your handout, you can figure out exact miles per hour. I'm just gonna say there's not much wind, so I'll just put that little mark right there. There we go. Now, the temperature always goes up here. The temperature outside today has gotta be right around 30 degrees. The dew point temperature goes down here, bottom left. So that we'll say the dew point today is somewhere near 22. The air pressure always goes to the top right. Air pressure today looks kind of low. We're gonna call it 995. And last but not least, if there was anything happening today like rain, snow, fog, whatever, that always goes in this area here between the temperature and the dew point. So let's just pretend it's foggy right now. If it was foggy, you'd put the symbol for fog right over here. Or if it was thunderstorming, you'd put the symbol for thunderstorm right there. If it was snowing, you'd put the symbol for snow right there. You get it? That is how you draw a surface station model to represent the weather in an area at any given time. If you have any more questions beyond that, please feel free to email me, let me know. I will be glad to help you.